Hey guys, in today's video we are going to talk about an essential aspect of data analysis and that is documenting your projects on GitHub. So this is a valuable practice because it makes your work more accessible, transparent and understandable for others, especially for recruiters when you're looking for jobs or even when you're looking for freelance work. So this video today we are, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide or now you can effectively document your data analysis projects on GitHub. So if you've never heard of GitHub before, GitHub is a web-based platform that provides an easy way for people to manage their code, their files, and to also collaborate using the same platform. So projects on GitHub are stored in what are called repositories. And a repository is basically a central storage location where a collection of files that are related to a particular project, they are stored and managed. So, these repositories, they are commonly used with version control systems, such as Git, which allows them to track the changes made to the project files over time. Yeah, so Git and GitHub, they both work together. So, with GitHub, you can use it in either two ways. You can either use the graphical user interface which is what i'll be showing you today or you can use the command line which is a bit more advanced the first step in documenting a data analysis project on github is actually to create a github repository and for this you actually need a github account so if you have a github account you can go ahead and log in but if you don't you can just open up your browser and, se and search github sign up so once you do, you'll get a page similar to this one. And then you click on the first link that says join GitHub. Yeah, so creating an account is basically the same as you will create any other account on the internet. So once you're done doing that, you'll be logged in. And then once you log in, your page won't look exactly like mine because for mine, I've done a bit more of customization and also added a few projects. So the important thing here is to know where to create your repository. So on the top right corner, next to this plus sign, you're going to click on this drop down and we'll select new repository. So this is the page that you'll get. It will be standard for everyone. So under the repository name, we're going to give our repository a name. So most of the time, the repository name is usually the name of your project. So maybe if you're doing a sales a supply chain analytics project or a sales analysis project, that is what you'll put as your repository name. So for mine, just because I'm doing a demonstration, I'm going to call mine a documenting example. Yeah, so whichever name you give, you make sure that GitHub gives you this green check mark, and then after that, you can give a description which is optional of what this repository will contain. So, for mine, I'll write it's a demo of how to document your data analysis projects, and then right after that, you're going to choose whether you want it to be public or private. So, for public ones, that is what we want because we want other people to be able to see the work that you've done so with public your repository will be visible by anyone on the internet and then for private you're the only one who is going to see it so even if someone goes on your profile they won't even know that this repository exists so for today we're going to be going with public and then down here we are going to make sure you check this box that says add a readme file so the readme file is the one that now we'll have where we'll document all the steps that we took when we were doing our project. Yeah, and then for the rest of the things, you can leave them as they are. When you're done setting up all that, you can click on Create Repository. Yeah, so once it has created, this is how your repository is going to look like. You can see down here in this section, the readme file has been created and added to your repository so a repository is basically like it's like a small folder where you'll have all your files and your data sets everything that you used for your project that is where they're going to be stored so 
This readme file is the one that you are going to edit and add in the steps that we took in from the beginning of our project until its completion. Yeah, so there are a lot of things here, but they and most of them they are used when you are collaborating with other people. So I'm going to go through a few of them and then we'll start documenting our project. So the main page is usually this code page which has the where our files will be stored and even the readme file that we are going to document and then to the far end is the settings so when you come to settings this is where you can rename your repository so maybe you're not happy with the name you chose you want to change you'll come to settings and the very first thing you'll see is where you need to rename and then when you scroll down if you're no longer interested in keeping your repository you can come here and you can delete it which is the very last option and you can also change the visibility so if you had set it to private once you're done documenting with the project and you're satisfied with it you can change it to public for other people to see or if it was public and you don't want anyone to see it you can change it to private instead of deleting it yeah so now we come back here to code and then we start documenting our, our project. So the first thing we'll do is edit our readme file to write in the steps that we took when we we're doing the project. So we're going to click on this pencil like icon. Yeah, so when it comes to editing our readme file, we're going to use what is known as Markdown syntax. So it's basically markup language that is used for formatting and structuring plain text documents. So this will help our readme file to look the way you will edit a file in Microsoft Word. So this markdown syntax is like, it's almost like HTML. So the same way that you will be able to make your text bold or italic or to add numbering or bullet points or even to add images is the same way that markdown syntax will help us to do that in our readme file so i'm going to show you a few things um a few of the syntax that you're going to be using and then if you'd love to learn a bit more of the markdown syntax i'll leave a link in the description to markdown documentation so the first thing that you want to do um, is to change the title of our readme file so if you have noticed the name that you gave to a repository is the same name that has been added as the title for our readme file and then this next line is the description that you gave while you are creating our repository so we're going to delete all of this and then we'll give our readme file another heading so when it comes to writing headings on the readme file using the markdown syntax the one hash symbol or rather the pound symbol is used for a h1 or rather a heading one so if i do maybe my project is called sales analysis so if i preview this you can see there is edit mode and there's preview mode so once you're done writing your your text or whatever in the readme file you can preview it to see how it will appear once you're done so a heading one looks this is how big it is and then for a heading two you just add two hash symbols and then we'll do the same text just to compare so we'll preview again and you can see it is smaller than the first one so again when you add another hash symbol it's now going to be even smaller than the one before it. So we'll preview again. And that is it. So, so far I've only used up to four hash symbols. So depending on whatever it is you're writing, whether you're writing a title or a subtitle or a subheading, you can choose whichever one you think suits your work best so for now since you want to do a, a heading one you're just going to use one hash symbol so 
I'll call my example project e-commerce sales analysis. Yeah, and once you're done with that, now I'm going to tell you about the sections that we are going to include in our readme file. So we need to organize our project structure. So here are some of the things that you will add in your readme file. The first thing will be the project overview. So this is a brief but informative um, explanation of what your project is about. So you're going to explain what your project aims to achieve and why it is important or interesting and so we are going to use this section to grab the user's attention so for our project overview we are going to give it a subheading so i'm going to do the three hash symbols so i think that is big enough for a subheading so if we preview this is how it looks if you feel it's a bit small and you want it to be a bit bigger you can remove one hash symbol so for the project overview, I'm going to copy, to just copy and paste some things I'd written earlier just to save time. So you can make it as detailed as you want, but just make sure you go straight to the point. So after the project overview, you can have um, where you got your data. So you have to mention your data sources and also at least give a bit of a description of what your data contains. So we are going to do the three hash symbols again. And then I'll copy and paste what I had written. So So for a description of my data source, I've written, since I've used only one data set in this project of mine, I'll put in sales data. The primary data set used for this analysis is the CSV file, which we'll later upload in our repository that contains detailed information about each sale made by the company. So you can make yours a bit longer if you want. And then after that, we are going to do the tools that we used. So for this, let's say we clean the data using Microsoft Excel and then we went and analyzed it in SQL and then we finally created a report in Power BI or Tableau. So for the tools, if you want to do the bulleting or the numbering, for the bulleting, you put a hyphen, a space and then the name of whatever it is you want to write. So when you preview, you'll see that it has become a bullet point. So when you enter, it automatically creates the next bullet point. So next year I'll do SQL Server. So you can mention in brackets, or you can just put another hyphen and say this was used for data cleaning. And then SQL Server. You can write it was used for data analysis. And then the last one was whether if you use Power BI or Tableau, you can put that. And then you can say this was for creating a report. Yeah, so once you're done, you just enter and then you delete that extra hyphen that will have been created. So once you preview again. This is how your documentation is looking so far, which is quite good. So after mentioning the tools that you used, next to each tool, you can also maybe put a link to where someone can go and download the tool if they don't have it. So to add a link to a repository, this is the syntax that you use. You have to use a square bracket, which you are going to include um like the text so i can write text like download here and then i'm going to provide the link from where they should download in parentheses so i'm going to do here https microsoft.com and then you close 
so once you preview it's supposed to show you a link next to it so excel use it for data cleaning and you can download it here so you can do the same for the rest of them for sql server power bi or whichever tools you're going to include there the next thing i'm going to mention is what you did during our data cleaning and preparation so you'll do data cleaning stroke preparation again i'll copy and paste what i had written before So it says in the initial data preparation first, you perform the following tasks. So this need to be numbered or added in bullet points. So I'll just do the numbering just for a bit of variety. Yeah, so then again, if also for the numbering, once you write the first one, you can just enter and it will automatically pick the next one for you. So once you preview this again, you'll see it picked up the numbering for us. Yeah, so one other thing I forgot to show you when it comes to writing the bullets, you can also do like uh, other bullets within the bullet point. So for example, under Excel, I can delete that and then add another hyphen and a space and then probably which this link for downloading here. So if you preview that, you can see it added for us another bullet point under the Excel bullet point. Yeah, so that is how you add that using the Markdown syntax and then after mentioning our data cleaning and preparation, obviously after that step, it's usually the EDA, the exploratory data analysis. So, don't forget the pound signs because this is also a subheading. So in EDA, you also mentioned the questions that you asked to be able to find the trends in your data. So we'll do that and then we'll do bullet points. Yeah, so this is how EDA looks so far. And then after EDA, we are going to now do you're not going to mention what you did for your data analysis. So I'll come back down and write data analysis. So in this data analysis section, you're supposed to at least include some interesting code that you wrote, maybe yeah, during your analysis. So for this, we mentioned that you did an analysis in SQL Server. So we can include some interesting code that you worked that you worked with during our analysis. So probably you used a subquery or you used a CTE or a window function or something. You can just include them here. So to include code in your README file you need to use the back tick. So the back tick is this symbol. It looks almost like an apostrophe, but now it has been put um, the opposite side from how an apostrophe would look like. So it's this symbol that is next to number one on your keyboard. So you'll do three of them. And then you mention the language that you're using. So I'm do SQL. And then you enter. On the line below, now you write the SQL code. So for example, I can do select all from whichever table you are using table one and then maybe where 
um, a certain condition is equals to 2, something like that. And then once you're done writing your code, you again close it using the three back ticks. So if we preview this, you'll see the code has been added. And then there's also an option for you to copy it directly. After writing the interesting things you did during a data analysis, now you're going to mention your results or your findings. So for the results or the findings, this is where you mention the whatever you found in your analysis. So for this, you just do a summary of the findings of your analysis. So I'll just copy and paste once again. So the analysis results are summarized as follows. You can do numbering for this. So in this section, you just mention, you summarize the thing. So for example, point two is product category e is the e is the best performing category in terms of sales and revenue. So you just write such things for your results and your findings. And then for the next section, you're going to do the recommendation. So after you've done your analysis, you have found all these insights and whatnot, you need to at least give recommendations because that is how, as a data analyst, you're going to add value to whichever company where you're doing your, where you've done the analysis. So, based on the analysis that you've done, you have to list down, like, the actions that you recommend for the company to take in order for them to increase the revenue. So, we'll do bullet points for this. So you can say something like invest in marketing and promotions during the pixel season to maximize revenue, focus on expanding and promoting products in a certain category and such things. And then after doing the results and recommendations, we can add a section that is called limitations. So limitations is basically things like um, maybe you had to remove or to exclude some records while you are doing your analysis because maybe they would affect the accuracy of your analysis and such things. So anything that you did to modify the data and maybe exclude some records, you can mention them in your limitations just so that whoever is looking at your analysis can have context and know how much they can actually rely on it. Yeah, so for example, here I've written, I had to remove all zero values from budget and revenue columns because they would have affected the accuracy of my conclusions. Yeah, you can mention also the outliers that are there. The limitations is basically something that probably has affected the quality of your analysis. You can mention them in limitations. So it will be a sort of um, a disclaimer. So after the limitations, you are going to do references. So... When you're doing a project, most of the time you probably had to Google some portion of code or something that you also used to, that helped you in your analysis. So for the references, it will be maybe a web page. So I could do, or maybe if you use the book, so you could do, you can add the links to a web page, you can add there a book that you used. So I can do, um, SQL for maybe there's a book called SQL for businesses by whoever it is. Let's just guess a name. And then for a second reference, it can be a link. So once again, the syntax for a link, you use the square brackets, then you write the text that you want there. So maybe you copied some text from Stack Overflow. So I'll just do Stack Overflow, you close, and then now you in the parentheses, you add the link to the Stack Overflow page that you used. So I'll just do stack.com. Yeah, and then now we are going to review and see if everything, everything looks perfect so far. Yeah, so after adding your references, another thing I like to do is just look at the length of my 
readme file so if your readme file is just too long you can add a table of contents here to help you whoever is reading your documentation to be able to navigate easily so i'll go back to edit mode and most of the time the table of context of contents it has to be at least after the heading or after the project overview but i like to put it after the heading so after the heading i'm going to add here a table of contents so i'll do the two hash symbols and write there table of contents so for the table of contents you need to list um all the subheadings that are in your documentation so obviously when you list them when you click on it it's it's supposed to lead you to that section in your documentation so the syntax for this i'm going to use bullet points so you can use either bullet points or numbering so we'll do the square brackets and then now the subtitle the first subtitle that you want so for us the first one will be the project overview you just write it exactly as it is here on your file and then now we add the link section so for the linking them to the section itself in our readme file you're going to add one hash symbol and then for this title that you've added you're going to write it in lowercase so we'll do project overview so now the space that is between project and overview we replace it with the hyphen and then you close the parentheses so when you preview it has created a link for us so when you click on it since it's just below the table of contents you won't really see it move so if i do for an example for something like maybe recommendations or limitations you're going to actually see once you commit the changes so let me do recommendations remember you have to write it exactly as it is in your documentation then you don't forget the hatch symbol so inside the parentheses they have to be in lowercase and then if there's a space in between the words you replace it with a hyphen i'm not sure if it will work here in preview but let's just try so when you click on that it's supposed to take you down there yeah so after you're done adding all of them so let me just add one more let's do the data sources hash symbol and then you write data a space and then sources yeah so for the rest of them you can add them yourself so yeah if you preview I use the wrong bracket here, so it's a square bracket. So if you preview, this is how it looks. So you have your title, your table of contents, project overview, data sources, tools, and all that. Yeah, so once you're done with this, you can to save your changes. You just click on commit changes. And then this, this dialog that comes up, don't change anything. Just click on commit changes. Yeah, so this is how our readme file looks so far. We have documented a bit of stuff, but there's something missing. So we mentioned earlier that we created reports using Power BI. So obviously we have like a sort of dashboard. So it is recommended that you include at least a screenshot of your dashboard or your report just to give um, whoever is reading your documentation at least an idea of what the final project looks like so we need to first for us to be able to include that you need to first upload them into a repository so we are going to come back up here and we click on the repository name which is here on this hyperlink you click on it and it takes you back to this home page for our repository so here where there is this readme.md now we are going to add other files in here so to add files you just click on add file and you click on upload files so you have two options either you open your file explorer 
and you drag the files in there or you just choose the files from your pc so i'm going to click on choose files and then i'll just pick random data sets and include them so i'll select this player stats and then it will show that it is uploading as it is uploading in this section for commit changes now we are going to give uh we're going to describe what this file is so i'll call this players data so after writing that this other optional section you can leave it blank and then you click on commit changes Yeah, so and just like that, it has uploaded the CSV file like that. So if you have more than one data set, you can upload all of them here. So we'll come back here to upload files. I like to upload them one by one so that I can give a description for what each file is for. So I'm going to choose another file. I'll choose this bar plot. As it is uploading, and just right here, this is a chart. And then you commit changes again. So committing changes is basically saving. So we'll click on add file again and add a few more files. So, so this time, let me just drag and drop a file here just for a demonstration. So I'll drag this file, old boy, and then. I'll call this picture. And then you commit changes. So for this section, for adding the files to your repository, you can add pictures, you can add CSV files, Excel files, PDF files, you can add Power BI reports. You can basically add any kind of file here. So once you're done with that, Oh, now we are going to go back and edit our readme file so we are going to add like a screenshot of what our supposed report is we'll click on that pencil icon to edit our file and then just after the project overview we're going to add our picture there so you can always just drag and drop it here so i'll just drag this bar plot here and copy it here and then it will start uploading yeah so once it uploads you can try to preview and see whether you'll be able to see it yeah it has appeared here so once again we are going to commit our changes but before we do that i forgot to mention something in our eda and data analysis so also in our eda and data analysis section if but mostly for the eda part if there was some visualizations that you did when you're trying to understand your data you can also include them as answers to these questions so now we'll commit our changes commit changes again now this is how our readme file looks like so we are assuming this is our final report and how it looks like so this is now our readme file is complete documentation from the beginning of the project to the end of it so this is how the table of contents is is works so our recommendations is almost towards the end of our readme file so if i click on it it takes me there yeah, so that is how the table of contents work. Yeah, so now I'm going to show you how to um a few more of the markdown syntax. So for example, here at the bottom, I'm just going to show you how to include an emoji. So if you probably like decorating your work and all that, to include an emoji, you just do a colon and then now a name of the emoji. So maybe it's a smile. It will appear. You just press tab and it enters. Maybe you want an emoji of a computer. You just type the colon and computer. And then you select and you press tab and it goes in. So you may also want to include a table in your documentation. So for the tables, you use the pipe symbol. So the pipe symbol, you just do shift and 
you press the key that is before letter Z on your keyboard. So that is what we call the pipe symbol. So we'll do heading one. So this is how you put the heading. So after writing your heading, you again put another pipe symbol. And then maybe you can do heading two. And then another pipe symbol to close it. So on the next line, you, and then you again add another pipe symbol. And then you do the hyphens. Another pipe symbol. The hyphens and another pipe symbol. So what this does is that it adds a line below the headings. So if you now want to put the content of your tables, you can add another pipe symbol. So basically creating the tables is just using the pipe symbols and probably the hyphens. So you write content. And then you close. And then now for the second heading you again write content, maybe content two or something. And then you close. And then now we write we add the final row. Here I'll write Python. I close. The next one I write SQL and I close. So when you come up here and you preview. This is how the emojis look like and then this is how the headings look like. So if you remember for the emojis, you put them in separate lines, but now they appear as though they are in one line. So with Markdown syntax, if you want things to appear on separate lines, after writing whatever you're writing on the first line, you make sure you put a, you skip one line and then you put your next content in the other line that way they'll appear as two separate lines so once you preview again you can see the emojis have been separated yeah so another thing that you might find interesting is actually adding a line so when you preview we can see that there is a, a line that is a bit faint that is by default that um GitHub has put for us after the e-commerce title and the table of contents title. So, for example, after the project overview, I wanted to add a line. So I'll just come here and then just below it, you add three hyphens. So once you preview that, you can see it has added a line for us. So that is how you add a horizontal line to your project. Yeah, so I think just that is just about it. So one final thing that I can show you is also I've shown you I already showed you one way to write code in your README file. Another way is to actually just using one backtick. So you can use one backtick and maybe if you're mentioning column names in your in your documentation. So instead of just writing them plainly, you can do column. Maybe we call it column one. So when you preview this, you can see it, it appears um, grayed out. And this is how mostly code is written on websites. So that is also another way of adding code. And then also, um, this is the syntax for making text bold or italic. So to make text bold, you use two asterisks. So I'll do bold two asterisks and then to make it italic you just use one it's italic use one so if i preview this this is how the ball looks like and this is how the italic looks like so there's a lot more to be learned about markdown syntax so you can just Click the link that I've left in the description and you'll be able to learn more about Markdown Syntax. Yeah, so this is basically how you document your data analysis projects. Some projects, the documentation will be longer than others. So for them, you'll add a table of contents. For others, they'll be short. So there'll be no need for a table of contents. Yeah, so once you're done making all your changes and you're happy with them, 
you just click on commit changes make sure you commit changes because if you don't all the changes that you've made they will not be saved yeah so this is how our readme file is looking this is the end product you have our title our table of contents our project overview our data sources tools data cleaning eda data analysis our results recommendations limitations and the references yeah so we'll again click on this hyperlink that has our repository name yeah, and this is now how our complete repository looks like. So up here we have all the files that we've uploaded here. So the good thing with GitHub is that it also acts as backup for your project. So maybe you did a project and you documented it on GitHub and maybe by bad luck something happened to your laptop, it crashed or something. You don't have to worry about losing your projects or starting them over again because if you documented them on GitHub, as I've shown you, you'll be able to download them back onto your new PC and you'll be able to have your complete project together again. Yeah, so make sure that for each project that you do, you document it as soon as possible because anything can happen. Yeah, so this is how you document your projects on GitHub. If you found this helpful, kindly like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.